It's a good best practice to provide security training for your users. And ideally, you would want to give them this security training before they connect to your network for the first time. Usually, this type of training is relatively specialized. For example, there may be different security requirements for the accounting department than there is for the shipping and receiving department. We also have to think about third parties that might be connecting to our network and what type of training we would provide to them. This would apply to contractors, partners, suppliers, and anyone else from the outside who's connecting to devices and services on our network. It's also useful to keep track of exactly who's been trained and who has yet to be trained so that we know that everyone has a base understanding of IT security on our network. It's important to document all of your security policies and have those policies in a place that can be referenced by every user in the company. You might want to have online access to the policies as part of your intranet, and it's important to also add these policies to every employee handbook. We also want our users to have situational awareness. This means they should always be looking for threats, no matter what they're doing on their job. For example, they should be looking for email links or attachments that might be associated with a phishing email. They should look for any unusual URLs that they're asked to visit, and there might even be text messages for a phishing attempt. We also want to have our users look for any physical attacks. If they receive an envelope that looks very official and inside that envelope is a USB drive, they should think twice before plugging that USB drive into their computer. Our users can be very powerful protectors of our network, but sometimes they can also be insider threats. Insider threats are very difficult to identify, so we need a multi-factored approach to be able to look for and stop an insider threat. We should make sure that we have multiple approvals in place if anybody needs to update or change a critical process on our systems. We should perform active file monitoring. And if anything changes, we should be informed immediately of that change. And it should be very difficult to go through the processes required to get around any of those systems. We also have to think of password management for our users, and there are many different strategies for making a secure password. We may want to guide our users with some standard requirements, for example, a password of a certain length or a password that contains a certain number of complex characters. This is often something that we can implement administratively. For example, in a Windows environment, we can use group policy to force the users to use a certain length of password and complexity of password. Our user training can also include removable media and cables, because those can be sources of security concerns. Someone plugging in an unknown USB drive can infect a system with malware. And if our users are not in the office and they're not at home, we want to be sure that they don't simply use any cable they can find to plug in and attempt to charge their mobile device. The attackers are also very good at using social engineering to try to get information from our user community. We want to make sure that our users are familiar with some of the most common social engineering techniques. And we want to be sure that they are able to identify, understand the social engineering that's occurring, and be able to report that social engineering to the IT security team. Ideally, we would like our users to have some level of operational security where they're interpreting security from the attacker's perspective. Our user community often works with very large amounts of data, and we want them to understand what type of data may be sensitive and provide additional security for that sensitive data. Another challenge we have are users that work from home or remote site. This adds a number of different security concerns. We want to be sure that nobody is allowing their family or friends to access their systems that they use for work. We want to add perhaps additional endpoint security on those devices, especially since they are outside of the building. And we may want to have increased security for all of the VPN access they'll use when connecting from home or any other location.